My recovery from a horse-related tibial plateau fracture. Best therapy besides seeing my husband was the first time being able to see my horses. Before surgery, not your average broken leg. This is a tabletop of the knee injury. Many cracks at the knee joint. One plate, 13 screws, and 52 staples. Just a preview of what I'll show you later in the video. TPF, tibial plateau fracture. I have the full video of the accident coming up, also my recovery and how I got back in the saddle if you keep watching. But first, a little of my six day horrible hospital stay. Race one size fits most. This one was way too long. Not one of my nurses checked it. I complained of extreme pain on my ankle. Lady! Days in the hospital, no sponge bath offered. Day four, I asked, and I was told I had to do it myself. I was given a wash rag and a little plastic can. Sitting in my chair in the hospital, I needed help to get out of bed and back as I could not move my own leg. I begged them to hold my leg all the way down to the floor, and at least five of them dropped it in the last ten inches as they were too heavy or lazy to bend all the way down my leg. Feeling defeated, faking a smile. Next clip is of me jumping off the horse and breaking my leg. A few months after my accident, someone said, I heard a horse flipped over backwards on you because you mounted on the wrong side. Amazing how stories get changed every time they are told. Unlucky for me, I stuck the landing way too hard. My knee did not handle it well. A very loud crack. It broke my leg. F me, F me, F, F me. And so begins a long road back to recovery. You find out who your friends are. Besides the phone calls, the best thing ever was food that people brought and sent. I'm grateful. In extreme pain because of my pressure sore, I cried every time I had to get up and go to the bathroom. I had to stop taking the Oxycontin I was prescribed as it gave me heart palpitations. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Instead, I took 325 milligrams of acetaminophen. I also had to take Lovenox twice a day to prevent blood clots. If you have this brace, please check it. It's too long. Is it too long? Too tight? I had so much pain from this. I went back to ortho and they snapped a metal brace top and bottom. Finally, relief from the pressure sore.
side I have to suffer so long. Shape of the bruise from the brace. Shape of the metal from the brace. VNA took my bandage off after eight days on and forgot tape. Doctors were worried about infection, so wanted to leave it on. I asked for a different nurse after he failed to bring tape and blamed it on the VNA for not giving him supplies. That was an unnecessary pain. Two weeks after surgery, I brought some four, bought four by four bandages. VNA was using 10 little ones. I had to cut my socks because of swelling. My husband suggested the soft terry cloth towel because it was painful to have the brace tight on my wound. I bought this on Amazon to be able to take my first shower. My shower was too small for a chair, so my amazing neighbor, a former ER nurse, not only invited me to use her shower, she helped me with my clothes, getting this plastic brace cover on and even wash my back. I was so tired after even sitting, I almost passed out, refreshed but exhausted. My husband and my neighbor got me back in the forewheel. The teeth of the Velcro fell out daily. One of the teeth stuck into my wound. It got a little infected and I squeezed it out. Here's my very painful pressure sore. The brace caused more pain than the wound at this point. Normal bruising on the back of the knee, back of the thigh, betadine for the pressure sore. The bottoms of my feet peeled. It was gross, but after it was done, it was like I had newborn baby feet. I have no photos of that. I applied raw manuka honey on my wound a few days after the staples were removed. I put homemade can of butter on my leg daily for pain. I made it using extra virgin coconut oil. It took care of the pain from the brace and muscular pain. Five months later, I still apply it daily. I had to bring my kefir out of hibernation. This is really good for your bones. Tons of probiotics. I have kefir grains. I pour raw milk over these to make shakes daily using homemade elderberry syrup, cinnamon, fresh and frozen fruit. You can look this up on YouTube. Three weeks post-op making my first meal. It took a very long time back and forth and I would have to sit down to chop anything. My first meal was an easy one and the drink. And now I am doing a daring crawling up the stairs backwards on my ass, leaving my pony right there at the bottom of the stairs because I, I didn't fart. I did not fart. I have another pony upstairs <sighs> and I come down on my ass too look at that look at those white legs three weeks post-op my husband would give me a ride in the four-wheeler to the ring on back in a pajama still on bare feet I developed big calluses on my palms from my walker and crutches my first time out alone, my visiting nurse took me out before this. While using the walker, I needed my husband to spot me going up hills to get in and out of the house. It took all the strength I can muster. Besides ice and elevation, this basket was my friend. Easy to carry stuff in the garden or upstairs. My harvest from my garden full of weeds. I needed to put my feet in the grass for healing, look up grounding, my dog happy to be close to me. I'm very protective of my left leg. Finally getting dressed daily. Sun on my face feels good, bare feet on the ground. These horrible pants will be the first to go once I'm done with therapy. I guess I'll just sit. And teach my lessons. My trusty steed. It was 10% weight bearing, but trying to look like a badass wearing my shirt. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Nothing about this injury is fast. After the VNA stopped visiting one month post off, my husband drove me to therapy several times. So, three months of non weight bearing. And I reach another milestone.
Watchman would leave the four-wheeler at the door for me after he was done with the chores on the farm. Freedom. First time picking horses' feet, sitting on a rolling stool. Sitting out with my coffee and glasses to trim a horse, I paid a barefoot trimmer to do two others as it was too much for me to risk. I fell off my stool and my husband had to pick me up. Good thing my horses are off. Getting some vitamin D with my love. He works harder than anyone I have ever known. I am so blessed. I put pool in little pieces wrap of that wrap that I changed often. Some parts of this video you have to read yourself because it doesn't show up on certain clips. I have no idea why. As I'm trying to voice over. been working on this video for, I'd say, a month. One more. Right up. Eyes up, shoulders back, heels down. Great job. Just getting here to sit down was very tiring. Right after my injury, my new saddle arrived. I kept it in the house for a few days just to see how it felt. I had my husband move it to the hallway. I asked him to bring me a mounting block one and a half months post-op. I wanted to start getting in the saddle trip before getting on my horse. I had asked three times over the course of a week or so, nothing. Granted, he was very busy taking care of me. I got on. I almost cried. I walked in the house and said, I got on my effing saddle. I needed this so bad I lost my temper. My husband, in a calm voice, said, why don't you go take the four-wheeler to the round pen and look in there? I saw this and just started bawling. So what, the block was on the wrong side. I had no strength to move it. I asked a boarder to please give me a hand. She moved it to the other side. I climbed up using my crutch, holding on the round pen. The day before, I did my first stairs at PT that I had not done since leaving the hospital. I was on good work then. I hobbled back in the house crying and apologizing to my husband and said, I want to ride today. What farm boy built me? He's the best. My maiden voyage. My trusty steed. Hi. The eagle has left the nest. Look of your joy.
I applied for a temporary handicap plate, well worth the trouble. I can shop by myself. Strangers would help me load groceries. Since it's my left foot, I'm able to drive myself to therapy. It was very hard to get in my truck. Worth it to feel normal, even if only behind the wheel. It's my first first time um, dismounting from this today, but I have done this twice now. The showing, mounting, and dismounting. That. Step up. And this is how I dismount. I just picked up my cane and walked over. Off to my first cowboy mounted shooting practice to see if I'm able to compete. Two and a half months post-op, I could not saddle him or load him up. My husband helped, and I drove there myself. Two of my students offered to help me when I got there. They were amazing many times over to help me get back into the saddle. That was easy. Good thing he self-loads like a dream. Out behind the farm on a 10 pipeline. My other unicorn. Twelve weeks later, finally permission to 100% weight bear is tolerated. Super happy to start working on getting stronger. Now I started to experience severe pain. I started taking aspirin. I felt like I had a large piece of metal, much larger than what was actually in there, from my knee to my ankle. I was really scared. Pain or not, the smile was real. I had just been given permission to weight bear four days ago, and now I am in pain if I put my weight on it. My PT person said, wow, look at Kathy. When she can weight bear, she'll be off and running. The ortho is not returning my calls, more crying. It feels like someone's grabbing it tightly. I did not feel any of this for months. No pain besides random streaks of pain. When first injured, the doctor in the hospital said, you'll be back to normal in two months. What a lie. Now three months post-op, I go on YouTube to see if I can find info on tibial plateau fracture. I'm glad I did. A gal's video directed me. I joked and said I had help to do everything except wipe my arse. The only thing I did was put her front boots on. I went back to non-weight bearing as my leg was killing me after getting permission to weight bear as tolerated. Almost three months post-op. My first competition since my accident it felt good to be back, but it was a bit afraid and could not put weight in my left stirrup. I dropped my left stirrup down two extra holes. I felt better after my first stage. If my surgeon, who did a great job repairing my knee, would have warned me that just because he said I could do whatever I wanted after a very long three months of touchdown weight bearing, that I would not be able to walk right away. I would now feel so much pain and have so much swelling. He would have saved me so much mental anguish. The recovery from this type of fracture is a long one. You are forced to be patient, even with an amazing caregiver, my husband. It's been so difficult. I want to help others with this video like I was helped. I wish I had known sooner in my recovery what to expect with this type of fracture.
in the garden weeding and planting lettuce. Healing, but I also put on 25 pounds of leg press. Hurdles at PT, I did not jump them, just high stepping. Doing a fall ride almost four months post-op. My crutch holder. Pain. Three and a half months later, my first time back to training horses off farm, I traveled to this farm to load a horse. I made a video of the session. I was successful thanks to the grace of God, and I was about 35%. Oh, yeah. So, look at my long leg. Oh, it's the most I've walked outside. I walked from the house to here, and I'm going back with no pain. It's a little painful. I do too much. But I'm getting there. Looking good. Gina, whoa, good girl. My first time walking out without a cane. finally feel like I'm going forward. We're all different. I hope this video helped you. Take it easy. Work hard. Give yourself grace. Thank your caregivers. Things will get better. God bless you and keep you positive. The end.